Hi everyone, it's Sam, NFT Statistics, and this is your Proof Daily NFT Countdown. Lots to talk about today. You know, I like to be upbeat. I like to be someone who is positive on the space, who cheers the space on, but I'm also gonna be honest, I do like to look at the data, and the data right now says this is like the mother of all bear markets. You know, I've been in the space for two years. I've never seen negative price action like this. Hate to say it, but we're gonna look into it. We're gonna see if there are any glimmers of hope. We're gonna talk about momentum, something I've done a lot of work on, as well as this three arrow capital and Sotheby's kind of joining forces to sell off a lot of those assets. Let's get right into it. Starting off with a quick market overview. Volumes were down versus a little bit, bit of a jump we had yesterday. Most of the market share, again, with Blur, about 77%. Now, this chart's been floating around Twitter, and it's true. You know, Unique users has just completely collapsed. Over the past two weeks, we've gone from 20,000 unique users per day to something like 8,000 per day. So really, and I think this has to do with prices going down. I think it has a lot to do with, with gas prices. You know, every time you're, you're trading an NFT right now, you're paying $40, $50. No one wants to do that. We all made that mistake last year. No one wants to do it again. Uh, you know, and people focused on, on, on crypto, you know, kind of altcoins, stuff like that. But either way, unique users has really gone down. And with that, the price negative slide like a ski slope just kind of continues here. Another really weak day for the large cap index. Gutters were a little bit strong, but not too strong. You know, weakness in Coda's in Moonbirds, Clonex, Cool Cats. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk about, I talked yesterday about how I think what has happened here is that there are so many NFTs right now that are being traded back and forth between airdrop farmers. You have the supply there. Someone dumped today 200 beans at once. When that's happening, it's just very hard for a buyer to go in and buy. I think CryptoPunks is one of the interesting examples because even through Luna, even through FTX, CryptoPunks were very, very steady. And they were reasonably liquid. You know, you get 15, 20 trades a lot of the days. You know, I, I, one of the stats I reported is that for nine, nine consecutive months, for nine consecutive months, you didn't go a single day, or I'm sorry, a single week where CryptoPunks moved more than 10%. So it really traded in a band and you can see it there. What happened when airdrop farming started was you got this big rally as people were incentivized to bid, prices went higher, people thought it was a new paradigm for punks. And then suddenly, you know, someone dumped a hundred at once. And those a hundred NFTs kind of entered the vortex, entered the circle where airdrop farmers are passing them back and forth. Real buyers see so many in there, don't really step in, you know, and we've seen the price basically go from 75 to 49 ETH since yesterday you had some of the first punk trades below 50, below 50 ETH going all the way back to about June of last year. You know, in terms of the mid cap index, also just precipitously down, really negative day for that. A little strength in Kampai Pandas, a lot of weakness in Fluff. Fluff was up a couple days ago, pretty big, now down pretty big. Alien Friends also quite weak. One collection that had a decently positive name was Nakamigos. Nakamigos came out and tweeted that Nakamigos are half the story. Next part coming for holders later this year, creating anticipation, creating mystery, creating unknowns. We saw a little bit of a spot, a little bit of a pump. I mean, if you look at this chart, it was nothing all that crazy, but flow went from like 0.27 to 0.35, something like that. So in this market, can't complain. You give us an update, we're not complaining here. Also, Milady, you know, Milady I talked about yesterday, just completely on fire, up to 2.5 ETH floor. Uh, you know, I, I tweeted about it. Someone said that the community, the people who own Milady, a lot of people really involved in the crypto world and all coins. They said that they're printing money with Pepe. They're richer than the, at peak bull market. And maybe that's the reason a lot of this money is funneling into Milady. Milady also has a brother set called Redacted Remilio. This is, it took a long time for this to mint out. This was minted in the summer. Looks very similar, but this set is completely on fire. You can see here, you know, the open sea trades. Uh, their chart just from a week ago to now, the price has gone from 0.3 to around 0.7 ETH. You know, so probably very similar set of bidders, but this this set is one of those things that is doing very, very well. In terms of art blocks, a fair bit of volume. You know, four collections did more than 10 ETH of volume. You know, it's not a lot by three months ago standards, but by today's standards, it was a decent amount of volume. If you look at where those trades were though, again, a lot of people accepting weath bids. Some of the ones that stuck out to me, a ringer sold for 22.5 weath. Really cool ringer too. I really kind of like that. A gazers sold for 10 weath. One of the lowest gazer sales we've had in a while. A chromy squiggle for eight. And then a meridian did sell for 7.5 ETH. This was someone reaching and buying at floor. So nice to see that. We'll take it. Couple other things I want to talk about. Story number two. Let's talk about NFT momentum. And the reason I want to talk about this is I often say NFTs are momentum assets. Okay. And I've shown research in the past that when NFTs go up, that means they're more likely to go up the next day. When they go down, they're more likely to go down. I wanted to see if that's true in the blur era. So I looked at a bunch of projects and wanted to check on this, looked at the median sales price per day 
for 2003. Again, yeah, looked at median sales price across collections in 2023, not 2003, 2023. Uh, and then I want to see how much, how much information can we gather uh, about how prices are going to trade today based on how they traded yesterday. And it was pretty striking. I think we're really seeing an environment where NFTs remain very sharply momentum assets. Uh, other deed and beans are two that really stand out. What these blue charts, what these blue bars say is what is the price performance, uh, the average price performance for a project if the floor went up yesterday, okay? And you can see on other deed, if the floor went up yesterday, today the average move would be about 1.3% higher for the floor for the median sales price. If the floor went down yesterday, the red bar, today is likely to be a negative 1.2% move. And really across every single one of these collections, really pronounced in Azuki's, Beans, Pudgies, Moonbirds, you know, yesterday's move has a huge impact on today. The only project where it wasn't the case is Mebits. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Mebits actually has more likely to go down if yesterday went up, more likely to go up if yesterday went down. And yeah, you know, I was trying to think why is that one one potential explanation I had is that you have a lot of kind of like old school Mebit holders who tend to sweep when the, when when prices get really low, a little bit more value investing, whereas I think everybody else is much more kind of in the herd mentality, you know, and following where the momentum is. This is one other chart basically said how likely is the, is the median sales price to go up today based on what happened yesterday? Other, with other deed, for example, if yesterday went up, there's a 60% chance the floor is going to go up today based on 2023 data. If yesterday went down, there's only a 32% chance that the floor will go up today. And you can see across these collections, this is true really across the board. The only one, again, where it hasn't been true is Mebits. So I thought that was pretty interesting. One other thing, some people say, oh, obviously, I, you know, asset classes are, have momentum to them. It's actually not true. If you look at S&P 500, Ethereum, Bitcoin, you know, most asset classes, you really derive zero value from what yesterday happened. I, I looked at Bitcoin over the past year, basically the exact same likely move, regardless of what the past day's behavior was. And I think that's just what happens in much more efficient markets, markets that are driven less by kind of whales and, and people sweeping and things like that. I thought that was interesting, figured I'd share it with you. Third thing to talk about, Sotheby's Grails, let's go. You know, and basically what happened here, I think we've talked about this before, Three Arrow Capital, as we know, basically went bankrupt. Uh, investors lost a ton of money, but they own a ton of NFTs, a ton of Grail NFTs that Vincent Van Doe worked with Three Arrow Capital to buy. Now those assets, you know, the money from that needs to go back to their investors and their creditors. Okay, so in order to do that, though, they have to get liquidity. So there's always this question, you have all these NFTs owned by this 3AC portfolio, how do you get liquidity? How do you convert that into ETH, especially in an environment like we have right now? And what they ended up doing was tying hands with Sotheby's. This is a Bloomberg article, and Sotheby's is going to find a way to liquidate this portfolio. They've named the collection Grails. You know, I think Proof does Grails better. I'm just going to say it. Proof, we got Grails. Our Grails product is awesome. They took that name Grails, but I use Grails all the time. Either way, Eli, if you're out there, I think you do Grails better. But anyways, they named this Grails. This is the, the portfolio that they are, the 3AC, they're calling it the Grails portfolio. And then they said here that they're going to kind of auction it starting May 19th. Okay. And what's interesting is that they're going to do a lot of different formats over the course of the year, online auctions, live auctions, private sales. Basically, if you want one, you can ping the guy, additional sales channels, things like that. And I think they know if you dumped all of this at once, you're going to get a blur situation where way too much supply hits a market that can't digest it. So they know that they're going to have to do it over the course of the year and kind of leak it out slowly. And if people like those individual pieces, you can buy them then. Uh, they're going to pay to sell seven of them at this auction at May 19th, which is a keynote auction for them. Now, I wanted to look at some of the pieces that they bought. These are four that they highlighted themselves. They're actually four that I actually highlighted when I talked about this a couple months ago as well. Here's what they paid for them, what 3AC paid. For this ringer, they paid 1800 ETH. For this Punk 980, it's kind of a, a bit more of a fair price there on current prices. This Fidenza 320, uh, this Subscape 420. So some serious premium prices that they paid. Clearly not going to get that in the auction. Um, one thing I did want to touch on, though, is how big is this portfolio? And this is a chart I presented a couple months ago. So this is based on a couple months data, but I think it still holds here. You know, they have 30 Fidenza. Over the course of that three-month period, I looked at only 16 Fidenza sold. So they have basically six-month supply of Fidenzas that are in this portfolio. 17 ringers, you know, also double a three month supply. Archetypes at 13, Subscape seven, Autoglyphs three, but with Autoglyphs, you know, only one Autoglyph trades every quarter. You know, so they have seriously a lot of supply uh, to get rid of. My take here is again, a lot of NFTs are getting liquidated, 274. It makes sense that they're doing this kind of in a slow way. Uh, Sotheby's is an established partner. Clearly, this is a very legal process and they need to have a partner that does KYC that's entirely 
above board. I think that this format really leverages Sotheby's strengths and their relationships. So we'll see. I also think it's interesting to see this celebration, so this collection so celebrated, given that you know, it's kind of a terrible story of this company going bankrupt and you know their LPs and, and their investors lost a lot of money, but here we are. Uh, last thing to say, uh, Michael Bohana is the representative from Sotheby's who's covering this. So if you want one of these pieces, DM the guy. They're doing private sales. If there's something in there you like, get in touch with this guy. I'm sure he'd be happy to talk to you. Last thing to talk about, let's just talk about a couple notable sales. The first one is this Ordinal Punk, an Ordinal Punk. So this is the first Ordinal Punk sale since March 15th. Okay, so it's been about five weeks since the last one sold. This one sold for a crypto punk, a normal crypto punk, and half of a Bitcoin. So when I look at kind of the overall price here, I think that punk is worth maybe 55 to 60 ETH. That's about four Bitcoin. You, know, you add on half a Bitcoin, you're looking at about 4.5 Bitcoin, which is the price basically that or no punks were trading before. So, you know, the first evidence we've seen of where this market is is kind of in line with where we were. Second sale to talk about, and there hasn't been a ton of super volume, nothing over three ETH over the past day, but that gives me a chance to talk about a sale at a little bit lower price from a really cool artist. This piece is called Careless Whispers by Jakob El Musa, sold for 2.66 ETH. And it is a glitchy piece that has a lot of motion. It's, you know, it's, it's a video, so worth seeing it as opposed to in this screenshot form. Here is Jakob thanking the buyer, Jack, Jacqueline, I believe, Jacqueline Trips uh, for buying, also thanking the bidders. I always love to see that when the, when, the whole, when the artist connects with the buyer. Here are some of his other sales. You know, he has kind of this video type glitch work, which is on the left. That stuff is sold for higher prices, 1.77, 1.88, and then a photography series, which is really evocative and cool for where he's had sales closer to 0.5 ETH. So it seems like this glitch video format is selling a little bit better, but this was an all-time high for him. So that's great to see. Again, it's not every day I'm saying someone has an all-time high. Here he did for 2.66 ETH. A little bit more about him. I looked at his website uh, and the website basically just says, this is a photographer, digital creator who lives and breathes on the Ethereum blockchain. You know, so someone who's fully focused on this space, just on the NFT space. Pretty cool to see that. You know, he also has a bunch of series. If you don't want to buy one of one, but do want to get some of his work, you see a bunch of series here that obviously sell at much lower prices because they're additions, uh, you know, additions of anywhere from 30 to 245. That is all from me today. I hope you liked the show. I hope you found it valuable. If you did, give us a like below. Tell us what you think of it. And subscribe to the channel. We also have a Telegram channel. And that Telegram channel, we ping out every single day that we launch the show. So subscribe for the, for, for the Telegram channel. Uh, the link is in the bio below, in the comments below. Check that out. We'll see you tomorrow and every weekday with another show. Have a great day.